This week we talk bream, tench, roach, hybrids and pike. We talk the largest river system in the British Isles, the mighty Shannon. We talk tackle and tactics. And we talk all of this to the expert angling guide and specimen hunter, Kevin Lyons. We have our book review. And of course we talk mouth-watering shore snacks with the unique Pascal Briso. Hello again, this is Alan here. You're very welcome to fishtalk.tv, the online fishing show for all of us fish heads. I'm here in studio today with Kevin Lyons of Melview Lodge up in Longford. Longford's just north of Westmeath on the Shannon system. Kevin, you're very welcome to fishtalk.tv. Thank you for inviting me, Alan. Now, I know through the grapevine that you are a very successful big fish angler, bream tension, all of that, pike angler, but where did it all start? Because you're not born in Ireland. No, it all, it all started um, when I was uh, about eight years old. My, my eldest brother introduced me to fishing and it, it sort of just took off from there. And by the time I was 11, 12, um, I was going night fishing with him and I got into that. And then once I got a bit older, I joined sort of um, clubs with school friends in junior leagues and things. And then it got into senior league and then went to work and they, they happen to have and was this, North, this is North London, so the River Lee would have been a fishery you would have visited? The Lee was a little bit away, but we used to actually put all our fishing tackle on a bus, two buses, and, and get to the River Lee, yeah. yeah. But, and back in the day, Kevin, you had a lot of very good anglers down there. I, I remember you had down in Kingston upon Thames, there was a lot of pole angling going on there in the 70s, 80s. There was a lot of pole angling, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the, the pole had sort of... Um, progressed, I mean it's progressed a little bit more now with all the different types of poles and they're made better now and everything, but yeah, pole fishing but was... For, uh, but for you as a young guy, what species would have been your first fish, do you think? Would you have any knowledge of what it might have been? Um, oh, that's going back a few years. Uh, probably a roach or a rud. And it, roach and it, or it, rud. It, I didn't fish the pole then, it was uh, float fishing or ledger fishing then. So brother was your idol and he brought you along and probably chaperoned you along the river banks and whatever. That's it, yeah. And how quickly did you start progressing on what I call the learning curve? And you start picking up hints and tips from watching mature anglers. Yeah, it was, it, it was when I sort of started with other people joining us and um, then going up into a fishing club when I got a little bit older. And you, you, you sort of look at the, the way the seniors are doing it, if you like. And, and I see it just as a, even today, like as a continuous learning curve, you like tying different knots and doing things, fishing different ways. And, uh, you know, that's the secret behind it. You've you, you got to look at what other people are doing and Absolutely. you just learn everything, yeah. you know, a lot more than. Well, isn't there an old adage that if you have an inquiring mind, you can learn even when you're 90 years of age? It's true. Isn't that it? Oh, yeah, you learn something new every day like that. Now, when was your first trip over to Ireland that you came to the Emerald Isle and you said, wow, this is unbelievably good? Oh, uh, I think it was very early 90s, nine, say 91 or so. Or Holiday? Maybe, yeah. Um, well, I was at work and uh, we was in a fishing club. We had a fishing club at work and some people within the fishing club said, look, we're getting a few people together. Do you want to go? And I'd done two journeys with them. Uh, eight people came at the same time and uh, then that sort of fizzled out. But I met some uh, two guys when I was here from Oxford and I, come, I carried on coming over for... And what, what, what fish were you targeting in those days? Um, bream and tench, mainly. Bream and tench? Yeah. And where would yeah. you have gone? Where did you travel to? Um, well, it was all around sort of uh, the Longford area, Carrick on Shannon, Leitrim, all, all sort of those areas. I mean, areas I mean like, you're in paradise up there for coarse fish. Oh, this you could fish somewhere different every day, like sort of thing. It's, uh, I mean, we, we really concentrated on um, the River Shannon a lot. In them days, like with, with my friends. huge hauls of bream to be had. Yeah, yeah, and even today, like people have got this thing and say, "Oh, there's not the fish. The fish are not there, and everything." They are. It's just that because of various different changes, be it the zebra mussels or, or water clarity or whatever, the fish have just sort of moved where they feel safer. But if you do your homework, then and and your baiting and things like that, 
you'll find them. Well, that's why you have now changed, because by coming to Ireland, you've actually set up a business here, and it's Melview Lodge in the Longford area. So you're, you're, you're a pro now, and you're a professional guide, and your reputation precedes you, because I know from the grapevine as well how professional you are and how well regarded you are. What was the transition like from a general recreational angler to this pro, and what, what steps did you take to become a pro? Um. Well, I, I just sort of kept my head down and, and went with what I already knew. But then when, when I first come over here, even though I knew the area, I, I approached two different pe persons and they showed me around. They, they said it's this deep, it's that deep. You know, they told me all about it. I still sort of, um, yeah, I, I couldn't have done it with, without a couple of people's sort of help, even though some of the places they took me to I already knew. But, you know, it, it was a great insight just Local knowledge. The, yeah, lo it's, it, it, local knowledge in Ireland is, is absolutely crucial to succeed like that. But you see, to me, Kevin, that's, that's the essence of a guide, knowledge, and to know the knowledge and how to apply it in a certain circumstance or a situation that you can then leverage the best results out of it to give to your guests, isn't that it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, just to, to, to make sure I knew what, was, what I was talking about, you know, I mean, there's not... There's very few lakes or rivers that I've not put a fish finder over to find contours and uh, or any hidden away places like sort of thing for the visiting guests like yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. It's, it's a question of homework because when people in these days, even though we in them like long time ago we had to do it all ourselves, like but in these days people come now with the expectation of you knowing your stuff. That's it. So um, and it. At the end of the day, it saves them a couple of days of their holiday having a look around. The short circuit the learning curve, I always say that. That's it. Now, Kevin will be staying with us and we're going to be digging deeper into Kevin's secrets and all the little hints and tips that we're going to be able to part on to you folks out there. Now, next up, we've got my favourite part of the whole show, I think it is, where I get my teeth into, Pascal Brissot's wonderful shore snacks. Bonjour, Alan. Bonjour, Pascal. Comment allez-vous aujourd'hui? Oh, Alan, je m'appelle. Bon, je m'appelle Pascal. 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 We are here with your famous pot. Yes. That's a wonderful bit of kit. What are you going to do for me? Uh, today we will do something like different. So a little bit more uh, soupy, soupy. Soupy, we'll be, soupy. Yeah, it will be like a thick soup with uh, a smoked bacon, uh, vegetables on uh, like a uh, uh, stock. A stock. Yeah. That sounds lovely. So we're mm. going to have a thick chicken and vegetable stock. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What are we waiting for? Okay. Oh, chop, chop. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, so, yes, chef. Yes, yes, chef. Yes, chef. <laughs> so the olive oil. In the olive hot oil pan. today, yes. Okay, mm. olive oil today in the pan. Plenty of that. Okay. Voilà. Some. Oh, you can buy them already, though. Bacon lardons. So, yeah, bacon lardons, yeah. smoked. Smoked. Oh, nice. Oh yes. So Give yeah, that. you can you can Give. buy these in any supermarket nowadays. Exactly. They're already uh, like that. Oh yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Same again. It would take. Uh, even less from two minutes yeah. to be but to be that, to be ready. music to your ears when you oh, hear that sizzle. Oh, he's like a, oh. he's like fishing, you know, <laughs> you know. Yes, it is. Oh, life is about uh, we love the fishing, well. but we also like this as well. Oh, it is yeah. very important, you right. know. When it's you very do, important. Yeah, when you do yeah. something outside, you're always hungry. Yeah. Because you spend a lot of energy. And to have a nice hot meal like that is really, really nice. Well, we're know? trying to convince ourselves we spend energy. We yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse. Any excuse. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, right, here, look. That's oh sm wow. That's smell, is it? Oh, it's fantastic it is. The, the smoky bacon smell sizzling. I know oh. because uh, butter are for rich people. And we are rich. And we are rich. We are oh, rich cool. today in we, we Look, we have oh, butter today. This. We are really putting out the boat. Yeah, we, just oh, not too much because too we... Much. Yeah, yeah, we're being, you know, kind to our bodies. We have to look. After I have... A, our, our bodies are temples, remember that? Oh, we are. Look, look, at that. look at me. Huh? <laughs> Yours are cathedral. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> we oh. have some dice courgette. Okay, courgette. Very nice. A healthy option of... Uh, a nice colour it has as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. And give a good taste to, uh, oh. to the end. And that we release a lot of juice. So yeah. that's what we yeah. want. It's beautiful. So we have the smoky bacon lardons in the hot butter. And now you've added in the courgettes that are lightly diced. Completely. And it's beautiful. It's nice to see the Oh, smell. the aromas. Uh, you can even uh, listen that the noise yeah. is different yeah. because the courgettes are l releasing the water okay. and start to boil and okay. not to fry anymore. Yeah. That's exactly what we want. It's wonderful. Completely. It's like as if it's chattering to us. Exactly. You Isn't see it? the, come on, come on. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on, lads. 
it's thirsty. So we're having more wine. Yeah, you see what? Uh, <laughs> so today you brought wine. Oh, a little bit. You know, it's always, surprise. I like my alcohol, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's helping. Yeah, On a cold yeah. morning I like today. Wow. Oh, wow. What's oh, fantastic. The smell yeah. is beautiful. You can smell that. Lovely. Yeah. Look at that. The white wine is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Pascal, I love the color. I like yeah. the colors of it. Yeah, you see what? It's so simple. We're about two, three minutes maximum into it already. Yes. And you're calling this Pascal Brissot's soupy soupy, is it? Soupy soupy, yeah. Soupy soupy, okay. All right, but... Uh, well, it's a very interesting name, I have to say. It's original, it <laughs> if nothing else. But I make a mistake, my soupy soupy is there. Oh, where, where, where is yeah, it? Yeah, sorry. Do you want me to get it for you? Come on, Alan, Ali, quick, quick, there, on the left. This, this one, yeah. I have it. Alan, come on! Oh, there you go. Oh, sorry about that. I had to run nearly a kilometre for that. <laughs> wow. I hope you're going to reward me. I apologise. Me. Your apologies are accepted. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's uh, okay. stock. You know, you yep. take the, you know, take the chicken stock, yeah. vegetable stock, yeah. whatever. Okay. On a mix with water, of course. A mix of water. And you add it there. Okay. Voilà. So that's very easy. Now, it Pascal, is. you know, if somebody just used the normal chicken stock, a yes. cube or little, little cube. gel, the little gel things, Completely. is that okay? Yeah, you can buy it, you know, you know in dry yes. or, or, or even the little cube. Moist little cube. Yeah, you, you mix that with, uh, at home, of course, Yes. with water, you, yeah. you whisk yeah. it, and after you add it to there. Okay. That was a nice... And have you added something into that, like cream or something? Yes, yes. Okay. A little bit of cream. A little bit of cream. That's Not why too you got much, the color. No, yeah. yeah. That's why you got the color. This is wonderful. And we will finish that. Oh. Carrots. It's on hard the... to put into words how wonderful the smells are. It is. It's very important. Isn't it? Isn't oh. it? Oh. I like smell everything. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. And so you've got carrot. Carrot on the leek. A bit already leek. boiled. I love leek. I really on love you, leek. You add it there. So that's really. Again. Yeah. Take five minutes. Look, it's already oh, it's beautiful. My colorful. Gosh. That's wonderful. Wow. Yeah. You've just... been very thoughtful today. Oh, of course. You've been very yeah, thoughtful yeah. for me. We have all the crowd as have yeah, not we too much tea yeah. left. <laughs> we did something. <laughs> we did that. I don't know if they'd be very happy with just uh, saying that. Look, look, he's yeah. laughing actually. Yeah. Yeah. A poly fella. A poly grip. Yeah. <laughs> for those without teeth. We are joking, of course. <laughs> that it will be re ready soon. Oh. Now today we have... So this is Pascal Brissot's soupy soupy. Yeah, today we bring oh. it. Looks ready. terrific, Pascal. Yeah. And the colours, so beautiful. Well, today we will take the pot. Yeah. Do you want me to? No, no, it's a different way. Look. Okay. Voila. Oh my voilà. God. Oh, that's terrific. And we will take that. Yeah. But before testing, oh. have we? You're going to have a little crouton or what? Yeah. Oh, 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 I look. saw you with something yes, earlier. Yes, nice I crouton. I was not sure. Oh, oh look, look at that, uh, the crouton. How, voilà. how thoughtful is that? So this is Pascal Brissot's soupy soupy. With croutons just to top it off. Completely. Maybe look at a nice oh. colour. Well, I'm going to bon appetit this I'm anyway, I can tell it, you. Mmm, yum yum. What do you think about it? Good? It's indescribably good. It's fantastic. Well, thank you so You've much. You've done it again. Merci. Maestro. Okay. Yeah. And see you it's next fantastic. week. Au revoir. Au revoir, Alan. I'm off. I'm good go fishing, fishing, by now. the way. Eh? Yeah, good fishing. <laughs> Bye. Voilà. C'est terminé pour aujourd'hui. It's finished for today. See you next time. Bye-bye. You're watching fishtalk.tv, the online show for all of us fish heads across the world. Now, on our website, it's fishtalk.tv. We'd like you to go to it, contact us, send us any of your questions, any hints and tips that you're looking for, anything in particular you want to know about, just send it in to us and we'll get right on it and let you know the answers what you want. It could be on salt water, fresh water, game, course, anything at all, just send it in to us. It's our resource for you. Let us know what you want to hear from us. Kevin, you came over to Ireland and you set up a business here. What's the name of the business again? It's Melview Lodge. Melview Lodge, that's County yeah. Longford, just yeah. north of Westmead here in the centre of Ireland. That's correct. Yeah. And who do you cater for? Uh, we cater for all different uh, people, from sort of tourists, uh, business people, mainly a, lo a lot of angling. It's mainly like course fishing though, yeah, isn't it? That yeah. you, because you're, you're in Mecca. To me, yeah. this year, you're in the heartland of this wonderful myriad of waterways and lakeland up there, and you're banging smack in the middle of it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's right bang smack in the middle of like sort of both the Shannon system and the Urn system. And the Urn, my gosh, yeah, it couldn't yeah. be better. Couldn't be, no. So, okay, I'm, I'm a visitor coming over to you. I know very little about Bream or Big Tench or whatever like that. So I come over to you. How do you go about it? Do you, do, do you provide me with bait or do you go out and pre-bait or how do you tell me all about the operation? Oh, no, I, I mean, I, I provide the full service. The bait and everything is all there when it's um, whatever you want. If the person is not familiar with the bait or anything, I will order for them what I think they need. And if they need more, then we get more. Um, first off, when, when they first land with me, we, I normally sort of welcome, sit them in the lounge. We have a cup of tea and everything. And I find out exactly what they want, what their capabilities are you know, the type of fishing and they want. And expectation, I suppose. Expectations, yeah, um, is, is an important <laughs> part of it. As it Kevin, goes, the usual yeah, thing is, I want four tonne of bream by yeah, the end of the week. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you better be willing to pay for the bait then. Like, and you the, know, work, the, the work, and the effort, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, yeah, I sit them down, find out what they want. You know, some of them might be uh, have disabilities, at walking distances. Yeah. I find out exactly what they're capable of. And you cater for all of this? Everything. That's if, fantastic. If, if they've got disabilities and they can't walk too far, then there's yeah, certain places yeah. that I would I would take them and not show them the others. And then it's a case of jumping in the cars. I show them three or four places and everything, tell them all about the places, what they can expect and everything like that. And um, they choose one and over the next few days, if it's not going right, I find out what's, what's actually gone wrong. Right? And, and we swap or, or if they, um, want to fish a different, you know, a couple of different places in the week, then that's exactly what we do. And say, for example, the bream guys, because bream and hybrids, in a way, I lump them together nowadays because you're fishing for fish that might be two kilo in weight and they need a lot of feeding. Do yeah. you go and pre bait or do you get the clients to pre bait, say, for, for example? Yeah, well, what I do, I tend to, if they've not done it before, I tend to do it all in, all in the back garden and show them how to do it, what the ingredients and everything. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, they learn how, you know. Is it very uh, important? Uh, is this the key to success now for these big shoals of bream on the Shannon? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, it's pre-baiting is, is, is a must. Like and, and for an example, for a, for a standard session of say an eight hour session, seven hour session, the guys are going fishing. How much feed, if it's say May into June, so the water temperatures are on the rise, the fish are active, they've spawned, they're sort of repairing themselves and whatever. Kevin, what sort of like, Quantities are you putting in in ball size? Say they're say they're orange size balls or tennis balls. How many would you put in to pre-bait? Yeah, well, depending on the depth of the water as well, because that's in, that's important. Say you're thirty feet of water. Thirty feet of water, and you've got a good shoal of fish there, and everything like you could be looking at about one hundred and sixty balls, um, and and in that you'd have um, uh, corn, uh, pellets, chopworm. Ch ch well, chop worm that tends to um, attract perch. a lot of perch, Does that it? sort of thing. Yeah, it's that way. And how do you know, like for example, watercraft? I'm always homing in on this watercraft. It's a bit of a mantra of mine. How do you determine when you're looking on a straight stretch of shoreline of a lake, and you know from your experience, yeah, you have 30 foot of water there. But how do you know that bream are in the residence? Would you have tested out beforehand? And are you looking for certain features? Oh yeah, yeah. I would. I, I would have been out there on, on a boat at some stage. Like uh, describe with, what you're looking for. With a fish, well, what you, you're looking for any sort of ledges that drop off, uh, any contours where the lake at one end is shallow, and also shallow at the other end, and it comes down in deep. What, what you're like basically a basin looking in the middle. is where the fish are going to hold up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. If the fi fish are like a hundred yards away, but the normal feeding area, they will come onto the bait. And I advise people to fish it for at least two to three days in one spot if they want to. Um, Get the results. And Kevin, after you've pre-baited, do you do it the night before, or do you do it on the morning of arrival when, when the guys are actually arriving at the peg? The, the night before. Okay. The night before. If they when, if they arrive early enough and they want to go out fishing that particular afternoon, then I tell them not to put any 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 bait in. Um, just put it through the feeder and, and cast regularly. So just take me through it. We've arrived now at our swims at say quarter to nine in the morning. It's quite a late start. We've had our breakfast or whatever, and there's fish rolling in the swim. Is that a good sign? Yeah, well, if you're in 30 foot of water, you want them down there if you feel Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Often but you'll see evidence of some stragglers, stragglers on the surface. Yeah. But are you going to put more feed on top of that or will you no, wait? No, no, you, you just put it purely f through the feeder. I mean, if you get there, um, I normally give them a ring or if I'm with them, like if they're not into the fish after, say, the, the second or third cast, um, 
I can sort of sometimes I advise with, with a spod and we put it down so that why the, why the baits sort so of So the spod, down. describe that for our, we have a lot of viewers in it, Canada and the States that the spod, it's like a rocket shaped device. Yeah, yeah. You fill it up with corn and, and, and say particles and perhaps even breadcrumb or whatever. Yeah. How, what's the weight of that thing that you're casting? Um, quite a bit. Yeah, it could, it could be probably up to about round about sort of 80 grams, maybe more like sort of thing. <laughs> like, you know, so you've got to have the right rod for it. But what, what you do, it, you actually cast it out. And like you say, it's a big plastic rocket and it's got a, 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 a buoyant end. And what it would do when it hits the water, it would tip up and all the particles would um, sort of fall down and it entices the, the fish well, to so go like down. So it's like confetti coming down through the yeah, water column. Yeah. And Very it can attractive. entice the fish that are up the top if they haven't gone right down because you've put the food in the night before or so um you might have a few predator fish around there and they might be a bit shy to go down now there. you're talking but, my business yeah but then it, it it sort of entices them down or if they if if they won't go down and there's so many fish on the top then you can float fish okay sort of well kevin is my studio guest this week kevin lyons from um he has a fishing lodge business up on the shannon system he's a terrific big fish hunter he's a fishing guide but he knows the stuff now next up We've got the book review, and this week I've been given the job of reviewing a book. So I thought long and hard about this, and I went over my bookshelves in the last few days, and I came up with the following. This book is a precious book of mine. I have it about 10 or 11 years now, and it's called The Longest Silence by Thomas McGuane. Thomas McGuane is of Irish extraction, and he's born on the east side of the United States. I think it might have been in Pennsylvania, I could be corrected on that, but it's a book about a man's life in fishing but it's actually one of the most wonderfully written lyrical books. And in fact, this man is a wordsmith, almost like a poet. And he deals in this book with bonefish, rainbow trout, tarpon on the fly, and his pursuit, which is almost obsessional. And he likens it to a religion. And his wording and his descriptive passages are exquisite. It's like looking at the most beautiful painting. And I will recommend this book to any angler who is any interest in the outdoors, nature, the movement of water, the looks of water and shimmering, shimmering light on water and all that goes with it, what I call the total fishing experience when you're out on a river bank or indeed on a lake or on a pond or a canal, you have this total experience of what you see in the wildlife and all that goes with it. But this book was written in 2000. My wife, Roseanne, gave it to me as a present. It's The Longest Silence, and it's subtitled The Life in Fishing by Thomas McGuane. And this was written by the reviewer of the New York Times. And he says, quote, A virtuoso, a writer of the first magnitude, his sheer writing skill is nothing short of amazing. And you know what, guys? I think it's probably one of the greatest books that has ever been written in the last hundred years on fishing. I highly recommend it. I have a huge library of books. And for me to pick Thomas McGuane, The Longest Silence, is indeed an amazing, I suppose, endorsement because I have so many books. But I, this one stands out in my mind as one of the greatest books, Kevin, I've ever read. And I don't know if you've ever come across this man. If you ever do, it's a fabulous book to take. I'll take your word for it and I'll, I might even uh, have a look at it myself. Now, it's, it's available on Amazon. You can get it for around 10, 11 pounds sterling at the moment. I believe it's well able in the United States. You can get it anywhere in, you know, different bookstores in the States. In Ireland, I believe it's in Easton's. You can get it. But it's a fabulous read. And it's a book that you will dip into because it's a series of essays, short stories, descriptive passages, and great humour in it of the characters he meets along the way and his obsession with bonefish, coming to terms with tarpon fishing when he moved to Florida for eight years to try to catch himself big tarpon on the fly, coming to Ireland, and indeed just his whole growth, development, and education in the world of fishing. He eventually goes and settles in Montana. And you know what? It's a book I heartily recommend. Thomas McGuane, The Longest Silence. Now, Kevin, we talked about bream and all your coarse fishing. This is one of your rigs. I'm just going to hold it up to the cameras here. It's a swim feeder rig. Now, Kevin, explain to the viewers what makes this a unique item, because I'm very impressed with it. Yeah, well, it's just a... It's Can just you a, point it out now? Yeah, it's just a very easy setup where you um, thread the feeder with the beads on, onto the line. Um, what I tend to use now is what we call now, um, quick quick change beads, which allows you to um, use different um, hook uh, length of hook lengths, and it's really really easy to change. And you know, I know people 
um, use various different methods like loops and everything like this. But this has to be one of the most simplest sort of setups that you can this, and effective. That you in can in get. effect, for the viewers, that little device there pulls apart, and you can then separate the line from the actual hook on this little black device. Isn't that right? This little hook. Yeah, you just put a. And a sleeve then slides over the top of it. That's it. You just put a, a loop in your hook length, however long you want it, and then uh, the bit pulls out. You take that one off and then put a new one on, push it back in, and you're ready to go. This is, I think it's a tremendous innovation. Very clever. And you know what? It speeds up everything. And if you break it off, you're back in action probably within 10 seconds, yeah. 20 seconds. Yeah, less than that. And, and it's, it's a great method for people starting out feeder fishing, youngsters, um, to use that. Because it is so easy, there's no complicated knots or anything What do you like call that? that? What's that thing called? That's a quick change bead. So it's called a quick change bead. So it's literally like a small hook of, uh, arrangement that the loop from your hook length, which is maybe two and a half, three and a half pound uh, strength, BS, mm -hmm. yeah. breaking strength, hooks over that and the sleeve then locks it in position. That's it, yeah. You break off, your hook's gone, you have a bit of streaming of uh, line here, monofilament or whatever, your bottom end. Yeah. You can literally slide off the, the sleeve, yeah. throw it away and put a new one on. That's it. Otherwise, you're spending ages trying to whip on and tie it on. That's it. But like That's I said, quick. like I said, it, it is uh, uh, an excellent method for people starting out, especially youngsters. They don't have to learn, you know, they can learn it over time, but um, this is a great way for them to start out. Well, I, I think I think whoever came up with that, that's a very clever thing. Now, these are some of the, <laughs> you know, I'm like a child in a child, you know, Christmas here in a toy factory in Santa's Grotto. These are Kevin's lures that he brings with him, samples of some of his big, successful big fish catchers. Kevin, start talking to me through which ones you like and why. Well, for well, we, we, we start off with the... Um, the old favourite, like sort of. I mean, these ones are absolutely um, years old, and uh, like like the creek these shop pikey. Yeah, the, these ones are sort of all set for depths. But this one you can actually um, set at different depths by just just the, if you have it forward like that, yeah. it go deeper, and uh, if you, you can put it down to wherever you want. Yeah. And these are so old. I remember as a yeah. child using these. I think that's an Abu Hilo, actually. This one is it? Yeah. That's an, is that um, a Hilo? Yes, it I, is. Yeah. Yes, it is. I, I remember they were very expensive. In them the days, day. yeah, they oh. were. But and you I, had the. I've yeah. had that for years. Years. It was and years so clever. Years guys out there watching that it had a an adjustable diving vein for shallow running deep diving yeah and it's superb uh it and still it, works just, to, just even the engineering today. even today it still works yeah. now the, here we have i think it's a j11 and a j13 from the rapala stable it's a jointed minnow bait what do you use these guys for well they're, they're more for when you're going up in uh, sort of uh, reasonably shallow rivers and everything leading onto the lakes or something like that um, you'll notice a, a lot of my lures have either sort of orange, blue or black. They've got one of the colours in them. Yes. Um, this one is excellent action and I've caught some uh, really, really big Strike pro make this fellow. Yeah. It, it, it's just an articulated minnow bait and boy is that an amazing sexy action. That would make any fish say, wow, I'm going to eat yeah, you they guys. can't resist it in the rivers. Can't they can't and do you it. troll those? Troll them, yeah. Very shallow running, yeah. you can see. Yeah, yeah it's shallow. But um, if you want it to go a little bit deeper, you just put it on this. You, you can use it for virtually anything. Okay. We now have some sliders, Sambo type sliders, these guys here. Yeah. Is, um, is this it's a jerk bait? That's a jerk bait. How do you work it, this one? Show it's, the it's, cameras. It's, it's great action in the water. I mean, obviously, you connect up to it here. You're normally. Well, it's you a single would strand be, leader, though. Stiff single strand leader. Is that right? That's what I use, yeah. yeah. And um, it's a case of um, you, you cast onto the spot that you want. You have your rod down, it's, and it's just a jerk action, and this this fish will sort of yeah. turn it and dances jerk, erratically. Yeah. And, yeah. and again, the fish the fish can't. Um, Here's uh, another one in it. this lovely holographic, with scale, very realistic scale pattern. Just look at that there. That's the most realistic looking roach pattern you're ever going to see. Has rattle chamber in as well. But one of the things, Kevin, that I learned over the years from because I've been jerk baiting from about 1994. I believe it was probably one of the first guys in Ireland, along with Frank Barber, to get jerkbait rods. And we found that as you do the downward motion and then back up, pause. So as he zings side to side, that side yeah. move, stop. 
because it allows them to go as maximum width before turning right. back. If you do that and then wind up, you actually restrict the movement very much so. Correct. And, and you can get a very exaggerated zinging action by bringing it down and pausing before the upswing and the tightening of the line. Yeah. It's just a small tip for you folks out there. Pause all of the time when you're doing your downward motion with the braid tied to the jerkbait rod before you wind up and bring the rod up again for the next motion. Pause for that one, two beat. And that allows the lure to zing out to the side both ways and it gives a very exaggerated, sick dying fish appearance and it's superb. Now, yeah. some of these guys, what are these for? Now they would they would be more for your they're they're for trolling and they'd be, be more for your um, deeper sort of um, lakes and again the further you let this one out behind the boat the deeper it would go but the 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 action of the action of an, the these in the water um, is is absolutely marvellous I mean I use um, these sort of colours because up where um, I'm I'm located. There's uh, a lot of dark bottom lakes, peaty. Okay, it's a very, very dark peaty. black peaty yeah, it's bottoms, a peaty, yeah. And you'll have the fish sitting down there or if they're sort of behind the lure and it, 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 it just attracts them and they, they, can see, they can see what they're going to be grabbing hold of. Now you had a very big fish, was it last year you had a very big fish? Um, yeah, for, well it was 2012 and 2013. Um, I was lucky enough to, um, on both years, uh, catch the, the biggest river pike. How big? In, in Ireland. Uh, 2012 was um, 32 pound eight. 32 pound eight ounces, folks. That is a huge northern pike from a river. Uh, and then 2013? Uh, it was 33 pound seven. 33 pound seven. And what did you catch both of those on? They were both on roach. Flow troll deads or static? Um, that was static. Both were static dead baits, roach, which is a, a coarse fish species, very similar to that lure here that I'm actually showing up to the camera. This one here with the holographic uh, blue back and the silver sides, a, a, a wonderful species in Ireland for bait fishing, but that's fantastic. Now yeah. we've come on to, it's the, you know, these guys love it. They, they're very you know, competitive. You're a competitive guy, I'm competitive. <laughs> All of the guys over here are competitive on the board. It's the fish talk challenge. Are you up for it? Yeah, go on. You're good. <laughs> now I'm going, to, I'm going to set you up. So the drill is standard seven foot bait casting rod. I better get my glasses for this. Yeah, <laughs> you can do that now. Kevin, we have it with braid. It's just, I think, 65 pound test braid. You have a line guide here through the level wind. We won't st we start you off yet in a minute. You've got 10 guides to go through. Okay. Is that okay? Well, it's and now a bit we bring curly on the end. Hmm? <laughs> I'm going to show you here now. There's two little small accoutrements, as we say, to adorn the oh. setup. So you've got a Dennis Pie dumbbell tie float, and then finally you'll tread the line through that yeah. and tie off a braid knot on the front of this small Magnum Rapala minnow bait. So I'll just hand this back here, <laughs> and I'll bring over our leaderboard as we speak. Now, now, you can see there, the great and the good some of Irish name, angling. Some familiar names up there. So we have Carl Hughes still <laughs> unassailed at 123, Barry Darby at 128.5, Stuart Price, our friend from last week from Mount Falcon, the manager of the fishery at 132, Jeff Cooper at a very respectable 145, our friend Pascal Lerissier, the great French journalist and lure angler, 157, Ken Whelan, Dr. Ken Whelan, fish Reese Scientist, 239. Mick Flanagan at 320. Paul Burke, well, Paul unfortunately had to pack it in, <laughs> go on a tea break, because he was still at it. Now, Mr. Kevin Lyons, I'm going to start you shortly. And you, with all your experiences, oh. and I know you're a cool customer. No pressure then. So no pressure for you. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you, I'll count down three, two, one. Now you have your level wind, 10 guides through the actual dumbbell float. And then I won't get you snagged up there, and then through this guy here as well. So three, two, one, go. So Kevin Lyons, proprietor of Melview Lodge up in Longford, fishing guide and big fish hunter extraordinaire. You're doing very well. You're right through the, <laughs> you're through the difficult part. So you're flying That's it That's normally the difficult part. You're doing well. You have oh. 10 guides to go through. And the, um, the braid, as you know, is quite supple and quite a difficulty in that regard because yeah. it actually doesn't lend itself to doing a speed job through narrow apertures. 
You're flying it. You're redoing well. You're on 29, 30 seconds. Half a minute gone. Oh, missed that one. Kevin Lyons is, yeah, cool customer. Oh, come on. Born outside London, reared over there, came over here on a holiday. And like most fellows who love fishing, you decided, though, you're going to go one better than those guys. You decided yeah. to set up a business. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, became a pro. it's true. And you're on to 50 seconds. Oh, dear. And you're flying. No, you're doing well. The pressure mounts because of the fact that you're under the spotlight and the camera glare. Very well done. Very well done, Kevin. That's the most difficult part there. One minute and five seconds. Kevin Lyons going for the Dennis Pye dumbbell float. Oh, the finesse. Uh, you can see this guy is good at feeder fishing and doing all the little niceties that are required. Yeah, you're going well. 124. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Will he beat Mr. Cahill Hughes at 1 minute 23? Just then you know. Uh, <laughs> just, do it. <laughs> just do your knot and then you fly it. There we go. 140, 37. Oh Kevin, dear. <laughs> you did a great job. So where are you there on this? Now, so you can have a look there. One, so gosh, you're, you're rather respectful actually. It isn't easy. And I, I love seeing you all under pressure. 140. So, you will be, you've got Carl Hughes, 123, Barry Darby, 128, Stuart Price, 132. So you're above Jeff Cooper. Oh, good old Jeff. very well. So I'm going to displace Jeff down the ladder in a while, and we'll move the next guys up. We'll just leave it there for the moment. So leave Kevin there. So Kevin there, and then Jeff will be in the thing. So you're now fourth in line, Jeff Cooper's fifth. So you did very well, because it is actually tricky. The trickiest part is the float, getting it through. And that's why yeah, with yeah. the brain, it's much easier if I give you monofilament. Oh, right, it if flown, I gave you fluorocarbon, you'd actually just do it straight it would, through. Would so I decided there, yeah. we'd just make it slightly more tricky and whatever. And it's a bit of fun because it is showing your dexterity and you're going to come back and you're going to displace these guys ultimately. That's the plan. Right. You've been a great sport. It's Thank been you my very pleasure much. to have you here. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're very welcome. So Thank my you. studio guest was Kevin Lyons, MelviewLodge.com, folks. Go on to look at MelviewLodge.com. He's got some fabulous photographs in his album over there, but he's a hell of a nice man to be with. And they do a wonderful job. He also is a great cook. So he's been tic tac with Pascal <laughs> Briso, our buddy, who does the shore snacks. And you told me off camera that you're doing Chinese food, Thai food, everything, which to me is a great achievement. Yeah, I can, it's, I can do pretty much knock up anything. <laughs> well, now, folks, Gary and I in studio here together are planning on visiting Kevin one of the days, and he's going to give us a Chinese meal. And I'm going to then evaluate his qualities, let alone on his fishing uh, abilities, <laughs> but his cul culinary skills as well. And we put him up against Mr. Briso in that regard. But listen, this has come to the end of another great episode of fishtalk.tv. I love the show. I love doing it. The time flies when you're having fun. But tune in and go online to look at us at fishtalk.tv. You can see us and send us messages. It's your resource, as you know. Send us some of your tips. Send us some of your queries, some of your questions, something that maybe you want to get off your chest. But do let us know, and you can go on to fishtalk.tv, our webpage. So a big thank you for watching. Tune in next Thursday night, same time, and keep watching fishtalk.tv. Good night, good fishing.